Welcome back. In the last video, we have seen uh, how to define a cell transform for a discrete signal. From continuous signal, you extract a, a sample, sample of discrete values and then you put it as a sample function uh, so that you can apply uh, la as a sample function is a, a continuous uh, time variable t so that you can apply uh, as the formally if you apply the Laplace transform. Uh, so from the Laplace transform, uh, formal definition of Laplace transform if you apply to this uh, sample function, you end up getting a, a series, a series of uh, uh, signal values, uh, series of signal values and uh, uh, exponential function. So if you look at this, this is your uh, Z-transform, that is how you define your Laplace transform of that uh, function. So Laplace transform of uh, uh, the signal function f star of uh, t as a function of s is this, this is what you have and instead of uh, this form, you uh, substitute Z equal to e power st. So once you have this, you have applied uh, uh, Laplace transform. So you have a real part of s, uh, so s you have, s is a complex variable, s equal to alpha plus i beta for example, it is a complex plane, in the, in the complex plane this is what it is. So you have alpha is either positive or negative or 0. So if alpha equal to 0 for example, if alpha equal to 0 and what you have is, uh, this is the line, this is the alpha, this is the beta plane, beta line and this is alpha plus i beta is your s, s complex plane. If alpha equal to 0, that is uh, this uh, imaginary axis, if this imaginary axis if you see. Uh, after transformation, what you get is this summation, this summation e power, if I define z as e power st, what you end up is f of nt times series from 0 to infinity, uh, z is e power st, e power st is alpha is 0 e power i beta. So e power st, uh, if you take t equal to 1, so if you take t equal to 1, what, what actually happens is uh, e power uh, minus s n. So e power s is your uh, z, so you have a z power, e power uh, e power s, e power s is uh, your z, so you have z power n. So if you substitute, if you substitute what happens, uh, modulus of uh, uh, e power minus s n t, uh, t equal to 1, s equal to simply uh, i beta and then uh, you have n. So this is actually 1. So you, that means basically this is transformed in the z variable plane. So this uh, s, s plane, s complex plane to a z complex plane, what you have is simply mod z equal to 1. Of course you have uh, this multiplied with uh, whatever comes out. Okay? So basically this line, this line uh, is becoming mod z equal to 1. If you have a line here, this becomes e power. Uh, t equal to 1, so you have a minus alpha n, so minus alpha power n, so this this is modulus power n equal to 1, so so this is a mod z, z is only without any uh, n, okay, so that is your uh, z, so you have uh, this becomes e power minus alpha, so mod z equal to minus z uh, alpha, e power minus alpha is actually a circle again. So if you have, if you are uh, uh, if your uh, uh, transform, Laplace transform is uh, uh, valid from uh, positive to infinity, I mean alpha from positive, real part of S is uh, positive. If it is uh, it's valid, real part of S is alpha that is positive, if it is valid here, that means it is analytic in this, in this part of the plane. This imaginary axis is transformed to a circle because mod z equal to 1. Anything outside, that means this, these lines is transformed to outside this circle, that is mod z equal to e power minus alpha. Okay? So this is how uh, you define, I will just uh, remove this, uh, this is how you defined uh, your Laplace uh, transform to the sample function, so that you get your uh, z transform. So whatever Laplace transform you have, I denote in this way, z of uh, z transform of uh, this sample function, which is a function of z, as a function of z you have this as your definition. So this is your definition of your uh, Z transform and also you can also write uh, Z transform of uh, instead of sample function, you have a sample itself, discrete sample Fn of Z. So for this, if you take the sample, uh, clearly if you take, uh, if you have a sample, uh, you have uh, lap Z transform as a series, you have a complex valid function that is valid. For example here, for example here if I take as 1, 
lap z transform is actually valid from mod z is greater than 1. So, specifically you have this domain, in this domain you have this z transform as a complex valid function in the z plane. And then uh, if I consider if I instead of taking this uh, discrete uh, sample, if I consider as a sample function for example f uh, star of uh, t and if I add sin uh, pi t, sin pi t to it, if I add to that where is this okay. If I add to this f uh, instead of uh, this, la, this z transform of this is actually if you see this is actually same as z transform of uh, f star of t as a function of z because of uh, because of uh, sin pi t you are just replacing instead of uh, uh, sin pi uh, f, f of n instead of t you are putting uh, n's right f of t instead of uh, t you are putting n. So, you have a sin pi n that is equal to 0. So, instead of working with the sample functions you have uh, you, you work with only a sample data. So, discrete data and then it is unique okay. So, you have a two uh, from these uh, functions f star of t plus sin pi t and f star of t these are two different functions sample functions that go to same z transform same same z transform okay. Uh, so, that means it is not one to one okay it is not one to one function it is not one to one from the space of functions to z transform in the z variable. So, to if, but if you consider only samples, samples discrete samples and you will get uh, okay and uh, sampling theorem will enable enables you to give you uh, to, give, to make this mapping as one to one okay. That sampling theorem I will not uh, state it, but uh, just uh, do not worry about this you have a sample function which uh, different sample function will take you to the same. Uh, uh, sample data, but here if you take the sample uh, for example sample uh, simply take the discrete sample here uh, f star of uh, n plus sin n pi uh, is same as f star of uh, n. So, both are same. So, if you work with this sample uh, discrete sample uh, then uh, your z transform is unique okay z transform is unique. Is unique. So, that means it is 1 to 1 from this uh, samples discrete samples that means sequences of uh, these f n s to z transform. So, these have a complex uh, function z of uh, f of n as a function of z this is 1 to 1 mapping okay. So, this uh, how do you ensure this this is actually sample function sample space there is a sampling theorem that tells you that uh, if your uh, uh, transform variable if you for example, for Fourier transform there is a sample sampling sampling theorem that tells you that if your Fourier transform is uh, takes only finitely many values uh, finite range uh, in the transform variable uh, you can get your you can recover your uh, uh, signal by, uh, by, by only uh, discrete values of the signal you can recover from this sample provided uh, under certain conditions on the sample for example, the frequency of the sample. So, you have to choose some uh, this uh, that is a theorem it is called sampling theorem that tells you that uh, uh, if your Fourier transform of a sample uh, of a sample uh, some function for example, f of t uh, if it is uh, it is a if once you take the Fourier transform a transform variable is xi zeta let us say xi, xi is your some uh, Fourier transform variable and its range is only finite then f of t I can recover from uh, if I work with only a sample from this uh, f of t that means only discrete values I can choose so that uh, I can just recover f of t out of that. So, that is the basic idea of uh, signal processing and that is a basic idea of this discrete uh, transforms for example, uh, discrete Fourier transform, fast Fourier transform all these are uh, fast Fourier transform is uh, simply a algorithm uh, to uh, compute the discrete Fourier transform the same way you have this. Uh, uh, any uh, any discrete uh, discrete transforms and uh, you have this uh, you have to make use of this sampling theorem to get back the original signal uh, which is a continuous variable. So, we need not worry about that so what we have is if we work with only this uh, sample discrete sample your transform is unique which is a function of that which is unique. So, that is what you need to understand. So, we have uh, calculated a few uh, 
a few samples uh, what is its uh, Z transform uh, let us uh, let us do some more examples and then uh, its properties. So, let us uh, let me do one more uh, so fourth one. So, if I use uh, if uh, if f of n equal to e power i n x then then uh, what is your z transform z of z of f of n of uh, of uh, z which is equal to sigma n is from 0 to infinity e power i n x times uh, z power minus n. So, this you can rewrite. So, you can think of uh, writing this as uh, sigma n is from 0 to infinity uh, you have uh, e power uh, z by e power uh, i x power minus n okay. So, this is equal to so clearly mod z is greater than 1 this is valid mod z is greater than 1. So, because of this uh, geometric series this is uh, valid this is uh, this converges in the mod z greater than 1. So, you can easily see that uh, because because mod z by e power i x is, is equal to mod z. So, okay. so, you have this this you can uh, sum it up this becomes uh, 1 by 1 over uh, 1 over uh, 1 minus uh, e power i x by z. So, that is you have z by z minus this z by z minus e power i x this is valid from mod z is greater than 1. So, this is your z transform. So, so from this you can easily see that z transform of uh, cos n x and sin n x. Okay. So, get z transform of uh, cos n x as a function of z is simply a real part of this a real part of this uh, you, you can get it as uh, z uh, if you rewrite. So, if you write this as uh, this becomes simply real part right. So, this is a real part of uh, z by z minus not real part. So, how do I get this? So, once you once you have this so you can get this this one as uh, you can uh, apply this uh, definition uh, instead of uh, cos n x you write e power i n x plus e power minus i n x divided by 2 times z power minus n. So, you have two sums. So, sum of one sum is half times sigma n is from 0 to infinity uh, z by e power minus i e power i x. So, you have a e power i x times power n minus n and then plus half times sigma n is from 0 to infinity z by e power minus i x power n minus n. So, you already know that this is uh, first this sum is that. So, that will give you 1 by 2 times z by z minus e power i x this will be plus into z by z minus e power minus i x. Again this is valid from mod z is greater than 1. So, if you actually calculate together so half is common. So, you have uh, z square. So, z square uh, minus uh, z times uh, z times e power i x plus e power minus x. So, you have a 2 cos x and then if you multiply together so you get 1 and the numerator you have z times uh, uh, z into z is common anyway. So, you have z comes out and you have a z minus e power minus i x plus z minus e power i x. So, you have 2 z this z goes and you have uh, this becomes again cos cos x this is minus 2 cos x. So, 2 2 goes and you end up getting z square by sorry z into z minus cos x z into z minus cos x by z square minus 2 z cos x plus 1. So, this is again this is your z transform of cos n x in the same way you can get your uh, by just by writing uh, minus e power minus i n x divided by 2 i you can get z transform of sin n x as a function of z 
you can just take it as an exercise, you can get like this uh, by z square minus 2 z cos x plus 1. This is also valid from uh, this uh, outside this unit circle. Okay. So, this is uh, one example and we will have one more. A simplest one we can get uh, z transform is if uh, f 1 of uh, f of n is having 1 by n factorial, then z transform of f of n as a function of z is simply uh, z is n is from 0 to infinity is the definition of uh, z transform f of n is 1 by n factorial times z power minus n. So, this is simply e power minus uh, e power 1 by z. So, this is actually valid for every z for every z right for, ev for every z this is valid this is true this is finite okay so you have convergence of this is true for every for a for all uh, so that means you have a even at zero at uh, except at zero okay except at zero you have this is valid uh, z not equal to zero everywhere except that z is not equal to zero that means you have uh, this uh, circular disk except that point 0 everywhere else you have this analyticity of this function this z function this is valid the function is valid z transform is valid everywhere except at that 0. The same way you can get uh, other examples so uh, let us let me give some more uh, examples that uh, we may use later a z transform of uh, n square if you actually calculate. So, this is uh, as a function of z, this is sigma n is from 0 to infinity n square z power minus n and this one I can write rewrite like n I can take it out. Uh, no, I uh, do not take n, n out. So, what you have is n square. So, how do I get this? Uh, so, n square is this. Uh, So, you can write sigma n is from uh, 0 to infinity n times n into z power minus n I can rewrite as uh, n into uh, I write rewrite as d d z of uh, n into uh, d d z of n into e power uh, n into z power minus n. So, what is this? This will give you minus of that minus of this is actually will give you minus uh, n square minus n square uh, right what is this value this value if you calculate this one this is actually equal to uh, n into minus n square uh, z power minus n minus 1 right. So, but you have only n square z minus, minus n so that is actually equal to so this means uh, n square z power minus n uh, this is actually equal to d d z of n into z power minus n. So, you have uh, n square z power minus n you can write it as minus d d z of n into z power minus n times and you can take this one z uh, to the other side. So, you have a z here. So, this you can replace with this minus sign with z. So, this is minus z is anyway nothing to do with the sum. So, you have this summation n is from 0 to infinity. So, you, you can take this also outside d d z and this n into z power minus n. So, you have already seen that this uh, n into z power minus n is uh, derivative d d z of uh, this is all z transform of n. Have we done this for n? z transform of n we have seen that this is uh, z over z by z minus 1 whole square. So, this is what we have done earlier z by z minus 1 whole square if you do z by z minus 1 whole square. So, if for this if you differentiate with respect to z you get uh, 1 by z minus 1 whole square and then you have uh, um, what you have is uh, uh, z you have uh, if you differentiate this as uh, z here and you have a cube 
2 z 2 z by z minus 1 z you are differentiating cube and you have this actually 4 and this is a 0 minus minus plus and you have a 2 z minus 1 and so you have a this is what it is so you have this gets cancelled with this so you have 3 so this is what you have so 2 z by z minus 1 cube is the this is the derivative so you have minus if we just calculate this z minus 1 cube and you have z minus z comes out and this you have z minus 1 plus 2 z. So, we have 3 z minus 1 sorry minus z comes when you differentiate you will get here minus sign. So, here you get uh, z minus 1 minus 2 z. So, you have a minus that is going to be minus so z minus z is inside you have minus z minus 1 by z minus 1 cube. So, minus minus cancel. So, what you get is z into z plus 1 by z minus 1 cube. So, this is actually our z transform of n square is a function of z. So, this is uh, again where is this valid? A validity is again uh, for uh, what we use is the this is valid for uh, mod z is greater than 1 ok. Have you seen uh, z transform of uh, n this is also valid here ok. The same thing you are using as a derivative because it is uniformly convergent series. So, you have here this is also valid for mod z is greater than 1. That means, what I am saying is uh, if you have uh, this series for example, z power n this is valid let us say mod z is less than 1. So, this derivative of this if this is uniformly convergent which is which is so within this any close any closed interval within this any closed disk inside inside this unit disk if you take any closed disk or which you have this is uniformly so if I can do this term by term integration differentiation that comes as n into z power n minus 1. So, this is also valid from mod z is less than 1. So, that is what exactly I am using if it is greater than 1 it is valid this uh, z transform of n then the same domain this you def derivative of that which is for uh, z transform of n square. So, that is one and uh, let us use uh, some more examples which are useful for you to do uh, applications for you to solve uh, difference equations later on. So, let us uh, let us not do some more let us uh, these are your uh, some some of the very elementary uh, z transforms for these uh, uh, these are some of the simple uh, elementary uh, sample functions as a function of n some sequences uh, for which you have these z transforms. Let us do some properties of these z transforms and then move on to uh, uh, find the z inverse z transforms and then uh, we will look into the applications of this uh, z transforms that is to solve the different equations. So, let us see look into the properties uh, properties of uh, z transform. So, as usual uh, before I do this what is it uh, so, so far we calculated given f of n as a sequence from n is from 0 to this is a sample I have a z transform z transform is as a function of z of f of uh, n as a function of z as a function of z I have. So, if I can call this as capital F because this is f I write capital F of z ok. So, if I define this as a uh, capital F of z as the z transform of f of n the sequence what you have is this you give this one I have this z transform ok. So, what is its inverse? Inversion inversion is actually you you have a 1 1 because of 1 1 mapping with this uh, this thing you have this uh, because it is a Laplace transform it is a 1 1 mapping and you have inversion is f n. So, if you give this f of z so your inversion is f of f n. So, you look for f n f n f of n if you, you want uh, you want to if you get this if I get f of n that is z inverse of uh, any this f of z z transform of which is z transform of f of n ok. So, how do I get this as a this is as a function of n a sequence ok n is from n belongs to 
n is uh, from 0, 1, 2, 3 onwards. So, how do I get this f n? So, if I write this as uh, so, once this uh, what I do is you know that you have a z transform f of z. So, that is uh, validity is some let us say some z, z equal to 1, z equal to r for example. You have within this uh, outside this you have let us say this is valid f of z, f of z is valid. Z transform exists, exists in this domain, okay. In this domain outside mod Z, mod Z is greater than R, in this you have F Z exists. If you look for that uh, inversion, I simply consider any closed curve, it is inside, which is inside the arm that encloses all your uh, uh, singular points of this F of Z. Clearly, Wherever this F, Fz exists, this is analytic. So that means it is analytic here because this domain is nothing but your uh, uh, yes, yes variable on the right hand side, okay. Wherever S exists from here, that line beyond this right hand, right hand, uh, right or right top plane is exactly that is where F, F is analytic. So that is mapped to this outer uh, outside of this uh, circular, outside this disk mod Z equal to R, okay. So, mod z equal to outside this disk that is mod z is greater than r, you have this function f of z is analytic. So, all your singularities are inside only here. So, if you consider any curve gamma that is enclosing all the singular points, uh, so I will define f of n as 1 by, so how did I choose this? This uh, like, uh, like in the complex plane, a Laplace inversion is you choose any c that is that is where you have uh, f of z, this Laplace transform is analytic. Laplace transform is analytic, let us say, from here onwards. Then you have to consider oh, c outside this. c is bigger than this point. So, somewhere here, any c will work. The same way, I can choose this, if you really, this one, you, ch you consider this as a big circle that encloses. Let us say, this is a circle of radius, uh, uh, let us say, big r not r not is, where r not is bigger than r okay so that is actually this line mapped to that circle so i'll just write it as uh, directly from the laplace inversion you see that c minus i infinity to c plus i infinity that is actually a circle here so i write this as a circle mod z equal to r not which is uh, any circle r not okay which encloses all your uh, singular points and then you have uh, f of z okay and e power uh, s t so that becomes so this uh, let me let me i will not write exactly it's not exactly coming from uh, laplace transform laplace inversion so uh, this will become that part e, e power s t becomes uh, e power s t e power minus s t becomes in your definition of uh, z transform if you actually see the definition of your uh, z transform e power minus s t becomes uh, z power minus n okay and here uh, e power s n t you will get s n t so you have z power n you have z power n minus 1 you will get so in the discrete version the z transform is so inversion is inversion looks like this f n is actually is this one where uh, r not is bigger than r r is uh, mod z is uh, that is where uh, f of z is analytic in the mod z uh, where f of z is analytic, the z transform is analytic in mod z is greater than r, okay. So, so any closed curve, any uh, circle if you consider that is what you will get as, uh, as your inversion. This is you can easily see this uh, by complex function theory just by writing uh, how do I do this. Uh, uh, you can write this as f of z if you write f of z which you know that this is a, a transform of fn so that is you have uh, fn z transform of f fn n is from 0 to infinity so this is actually f of 0 plus f1 of uh, z f1 by z and f2 of uh, z square z minus 2 and so on okay by z square you can put it if you don't like this okay so this is what is valid uh, from mod z is greater than r that is what is the uh, assumption okay once you have this z transform its inversion why is this f fn we'll just prove it okay uh, so i'm just trying to give you a kind of proof proof why this uh, 
inversion is this one. So, inversion inverse function is basically f n right. So, why is this inverse? So, as you see f of z is a complex valued function its inversion is f n. So, I need to find what is this f n, f n I am claiming this to be this integral, this integral much a little similar to Laplace uh, inversion integral over that uh, contour, the contour here becomes the circle and f z is uh, okay and uh, this part e power s t and d s, uh, e power s t d s becomes this one. So, that is uh, e power s is uh, e power s t becomes a z power n and d s becomes say here uh, d z by z. So, that is what is the you see. So, how we prove this just by writing this one. So, because f of z is uh, z transform which is valid here and you try to multiply both sides 2 pi i times uh, f of z integrate over mod z equal to z naught uh, r naught and uh, z power n minus 1 dz. You multiply both sides whatever is required. So, this is your f of uh, so okay, let us see what this is. This is equal to on the right hand side also you can do term by term 1 by 2 pi i times mod z equal to r naught and you have uh, f n this is sigma n is from 0 to infinity f n z power minus n uh, into z power uh, into uh, this is your f of z into z power n minus 1 dz. So, this will give you actually what you have is 2 pi i times mod z equal to r naught and you, you sum it up. So, the initially you have uh, let me write this as uh, sum of the integrals you have start with f n equal to 0 f of 0 uh, z power n minus 1 dz plus this is a closed okay. So, anyway so mod z equal to r naught that is a circle circle of this is f of 1 times z power uh, n minus 2 dz and so on. So, you end up getting somewhere mod z equal to r naught f of uh, n times uh, dz by z, z power minus 1 dz and then uh, you and so on you will go on getting mod z equal to r naught f of n plus 1 and you have z power minus 2 dz and so on. So, this is what you have inside okay. So, assume that because this is a, a finite thing see this you know that f of z is convergent uniformly convergent. So, you can take this integration as well. So, the same thing same uh, uniform convergence of this series because this is validity mod z is greater than 1 this is a open set any closed set inside this mod z is greater than r this is uniformly convergent. So, so you can do the term by term integration. So, you can take this inside. So, you get this sum and you see that if you calculate this mod z equal to r. So, z equal to r naught times e power i theta theta is between 0 to 2 pi. So, this is your uh, parameterization for this mod z equal to r naught. So, if you substitute this into each of this uh, sum these integrals only this will be non zero all other things are zero. So, all these things are zero except this one. So, you have 1 by 2 pi i times uh, integral uh, this is over c this is uh, only you have f n dz by z mod z equal to r naught. So, this is equal to so other things are 0. So, you end up getting 2 pi i times. So, this is going to be f n is common this is nothing to do with z. So, f n is constant d z by z value is simply 2 pi i. So, that gets cancelled. So, you get f n. So, you see that this integral is nothing but f n. So, this is this implies f inverse of z inverse of f of n capital F of n sorry capital F of z as a function of n is uh, f of n which which we know that this is f of n that is nothing but now I can get it from this uh, result as 1 by 2 pi i times mod z equal to r naught capital F of z z power n minus 1 dz. So, the if you if for elementary functions you can recognize what is the inverse in the if you if your uh, function f of capital F of z if you cannot uh, if it is complicated. Uh, function, but it is you know that is uh, uh, the, the domain of analyticity. You can use this uh, 
you can you can consider uh, all you can consider all its singular points and out so that you choose some circle that encloses all these singular points of, of f of z and you make this integral and if you evaluate this that is what is your f of n so that is your inverse okay so this is how you can get the inverse so let us uh, uh, make some uh, let's do some properties of this uh, transforms z transforms so you have this inversion you have, uh, you have now you have defined z transform and its inverse transform okay so z transform of a sample which is fn sequence fn which you get capital f of z as your z transform and its inverse transform is if you start with fn if you already know fn then you know what is a uh, inverse transform of capital f of z that is fn itself okay that's trivial uh, but uh, if you don't know exactly what is your z transform as a capital f of z then this formula will help you to evaluate that f of n so that is your inverse okay so let's see the properties properties of z transform so we're just going analogous to uh, the laplace transform that's where we have defined laplace transform and its inverse transform that's what i have done in the for the z transform so there uh, uh, once we define the laplace transform and its inverse transform uh, we have uh, seen the properties of uh, z transform we have derived some uh, laplace transform for elementary functions and then you see its inverse function inversion is clear for those uh, uh, functions uh, those z transforms are uh, th those laplace transform inversion is trivial okay if you know already what is uh, you start with the function for which if you calculate the laplace transform and uh, whatever you calculated is your uh, function of uh, uh, for which if you want inversion that is simply you, whatever you started with is your a laplace transform the same way here if you start with the sequence you ha you end up getting some uh, complex valued function analytic function that function if you, if it is given you can immediately say that it's a laplace inversion is simply the function uh, sequence function fn the, or the sample function okay uh, <coughs> so properties of z transform uh, is all uh, as usual uh, like in the laplace transform case so linearity is uh, valid so that will not do the linear property so let us uh, let us do some uh, non trivial uh, properties that are not uh, simple property that is not that is not straight forward okay let us and that are useful later on so let me do as one first property is if uh, z transform of uh, f of n as a function of z is uh, capital F of z for let us say okay then a z transform of this translation f f n minus m equal to z power minus m times capital f of z plus this sigma r is from minus m to minus 1 f of r times z power minus r so this is how you get but we know that uh, your signal uh, you don't have the negative uh, values it's valid only from 0 1 2 3 infinity so this is this will be this will become 0 because f of all negative quantities are small f of negative integers are 0. So, you have uh, this is your formula for f n minus m and z, and z transform of f of n plus m if you calculate this one you get z power m times this is you have f of z the lap z transform of uh, f n and then minus you have to this is required. So, n is from 0 to or rather r is from 0 to uh, m minus 1 or you can use n n is from 0 to n mi m minus 1 f n times z power minus n so this part of z transform you have to negate it out of this and with z power m wherever this n plus m okay so so validity of this is uh, same as whatever wherever this is valid okay the domain of this is same as the domain of this so a proof we can see easily a proof is z transform of uh, z transform of n minus f of n minus m as a function of z this is by definition n is from 0 to infinity f of n minus m times z power minus n so this is your uh, 
So, this is uh, this will give me what I do is I replace n minus m by uh, this sigma f of let us say r n minus m equal to r. Okay. So, you have uh, n equal to r plus m. So, what is r? If I put n equal to 0 n r is from minus m to infinity. So, negative values of function is 0. So, it is running from r is from 0 to infinity. Negative values of f of r, f of negative values, negative integers are 0 anyway. So, that is why I need not write. So, r is from 0 to infinity and you have z power minus n is r plus m. So, you have r and plus m, r plus m together. So, you, you write, uh, you can write outside z power minus m outside. So, this is nothing but simply you get uh, z power minus m times capital F of z. So, this is exactly what you want is this. And then to look at the other result z of uh, f of n plus m as a function of z is sigma n is from 0 to infinity. The same technique instead of n minus m you write n plus m times z power minus n and here you write n plus m equal to r so that n equal to r minus m. So, if you write this n is from n if you put 0 r equal to m. So, r is from m to infinity and then you have f of r times and z is uh, z power minus n minus minus r and this is become minus minus plus r. So, you have z power m positive sign you have you get. So, this is nothing but z power m times this sum I can write it like r is from 0 to infinity f of r uh, smaller f of r uh, times z power minus r minus up to m minus 1 term. So, r is from 0 to m minus 1 uh, f of r into z power minus r. Okay. So, this is nothing but z power m times this is nothing but z transform of f of n. So, you have a z transform capital F of z minus this sum if I use n is from 0 to uh, 0 to m minus 1 f of n r power minus n sorry z power minus n. So, this is exactly the second result what you want here. Yeah, okay. So, this is the one property which we use when we solve the difference equations where when you apply this uh, you may need to apply z transform to these translations n minus m n plus n. Okay. So, the second property that uh, is useful for you is uh, same similar way you can write if z, z transform of f of n of z equal to f of z then so z transform of a power n f of n is if you have this this is actually f of capital f of z by a if mod z if, if this is valid uh, mod z is greater than a if this is the validity of this let us say if this is the validity of this if this is the validity of the domain for the z transform of this sample then this is uh, valid from z mod z minus a z by a is also uh, greater than r okay mod z is because because f of z capital F of z mod z is valid from mod z is greater than r. So, you have this is valid. So, you can write uh, mod z is a times mod a times r that is where you have this validity here. Okay. So, this is one and also you can uh, get some simple results. Let me use uh, z transform of uh, n into f of f n which is equal to minus z times d d z of f of z capital F of z. So, let us this is important again mod z is greater than r this is valid. Okay. But this is valid z this transform z transform as a function of z is valid here and this z transform of n into f of n is valid here. Okay. So, if uh, z is mod z is greater than r is the 
validity of this then this is this is what is true okay so this proof we'll see so how do we prove this so so more generally i'll put let me write this uh, n power k uh, it will become uh, minus 1 power uh, k times uh, this z into dz power k so this you have to this operator you have to operate this differential operator on to this f of z okay this is valid for k is from 0 uh, 1 2 3 onwards so this means this means z into d dz times z into d dz these are operators okay that many number of times k times you operate this you first operate on capital f of z whatever you get it's a g of z let us say and then again you apply this like that you go on iteratively you till you apply this last operator so that is the meaning of this one is not the power okay so if i write so let me not write like this way it's a confuses you so this times z dot dot d d z of up to k times k times okay k times this operator d d z acting on f of z where this mod z is greater than r is the same domain is valid for this so proof is uh, simple so so first you can uh, apply this one so this is first one is simple so you have write uh, z of a power n f of n this is as a function of z this is sigma n is from 0 to infinity a power n times f of n z power minus n so this is simply n is from 0 to infinity f n times z by a power minus n so that is all. So, you have this is nothing but capital F of z by a. So, this is very simple. So, you have a validity is mod a times r. So, for every z whose modulus is bigger than mod a times r is that is where its validity. And now to look at the other one. So, let me do for k equal to 1. So, you have a z times z transform of n into f n as a function of z is simply by definition n is from 0 to infinity n times f n times e power minus uh, sorry z power minus n and this you write as uh, n uh, sigma so z you take it out uh, z you take it out n is from 0 to infinity. Well, z you write it so if you write it i have to write n plus 1 here f n times n okay so i just rewrote whatever that uh, uh, sum that sum is becomes this which is equal to z times inside n is from 0 to infinity this i can rewrite this as fn uh, this is n into z power uh, uh, z power n plus 1 i can rewrite this as uh, uh, minus d d z of z power minus n okay what is this one we have minus minus cancel n times z power minus n minus 1 so n z power minus n minus n minus 1 okay so this is what i have written so this i rewrite this these two terms n into this is nothing but this so this is becomes minus z times sigma n is from 0 to infinity f n and you have a z power minus n d d z you can bring it out so you have d d z so this means so you have minus z d d z of capital f of z capital f of z is the z transform of f n this sample so if you have this uh, z n f n of z is this you keep on applying recursively so if you want a z and uh, of n square f n then what happens this is again uh, you can rewrite the same way same technique you apply and get this uh, 
So, you have uh, this is z times n into n f n, n f n is, uh, is a new f n okay? for this sample what is your z transform. So, if you apply this mod z d d z of uh, for a trans the z transform of uh, n f n of z. So, this is what you have to apply. So, this is equal to minus z d d z of this we already know from this. So, you have a minus d minus z d d z of on capital F of z which is the transform of f n. So, you have minus 1 square z d d z times z d d z and you act this to operators on f of z. So, for k equal to 2 is, uh, this is true you can recursively prove that this is true for any n equal to k. So, you can show that this is this is trivial by uh, induction argument you can show that this is true for every k. Okay. So, k is running from uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 onwards. So, this is the one property that uh, we have some more properties of uh, this z transform just like uh, what we have seen uh, uh, in the Laplace transform. We have a convolution of uh, uh, two uh, samples we consider here, there we, cons we consider two convolution of two functions and the Laplace transform of this convolution is uh, product of Laplace transform of these two functions. So, in the same way you have here z transform of uh, two sample uh, two sampled convolution uh, convolution of two samples z transform of convolution of two samples is a product of uh, z transform of each of these samples. So, that is what we will see in the next uh, video and, uh, and we will see some uh, inversion inverse uh, z transforms and then uh, we will apply we apply this uh, this technique whatever is uh, whatever we have learnt how to find the z transform and inversions we apply. Uh, to solve uh, difference equations uh, which are discretized version of differential equations okay that's what we will see in the next video thank you for watching